hasn't got too small of an R U either. It's kind of fun. So, welcome to First Church, which was the first church in Oberlin. Still is the first church in Oberlin. 1842. Uh, you may have heard me said that, say that this area was founded by Connecticut Yankees. Well, Connecticut Yankees brought their own architects with them. I forget the architect of this building, but he was from the school of Charles Bullfinch, who's an important uh, American architect of the 18th century. Um, the, um, who's the Boston person here? Who's Charles Bullfinch? They don't teach you this. Yeah, they don't teach. This is the Baroque organ. Quincy Dana camp. That's next. Yeah. Well, oh, next year. Like. The Quinta Dana is such an unusual hybrid stop, and it's, and it's unique to the German tradition. You could just have these two feel that a little bit. Try it. Bum, bum. foundations that come into the sound along with it. So if you can handle it, I think you could. Okay, so I just have to get used to the heavy action. Yeah, you have to be it's just, I think it's, it's a mindset. You just got to be, you have uh, a lot of, a lot of technique in your fingers. So it's great. Good for you. Good for you. Um, what do you, I think this could work. I mean, you adapted so quickly to the pedal. It was fine. No problem. Yeah. Um, what are you noticing about kind of playing it on this kind of organ? The Sound reeds are unusual. Not the kind of reeds I was used to. Sometimes the reeds, the sound of the reeds threw me off. It was like they're so high and like. Eh. Well, what we also added there, you know, we had we had the, this this cornet. Four 
colorful foundations which are a little bit brighter. So it has um, some of that. I mean, it, there is a brightness to the reed, but it's not as strong as some of the French reeds, right? Right. Um, but I think the color is quite. You know, you can hang pipes upside down, and you can do whatever you want. You know, you can just play them anywhere, and they get bigger and bigger and bigger. So it kind of fits into this kind of modern um, sensibility in that sense. And it allows, of course, many of those organs have lots of expressive devices dynamically. So you can change all kinds of uh, dynamic and registrational sounds via that action. But there's something very, very, very important that is lost. Any idea? What was lost? You know, it's interesting, you read about the, the, the end of the 20th century, or end of the 19th and the 20th century, when these electro-pneumatic actions were being developed. And that originated in the Netherlands, okay? So in, I think, 2010, what they did was found a builder to build a very small, working pipe organ. So basically it is something that you can assemble or disassemble in about 45 minutes, five minutes to an hour. I think we'll go pretty quick because um, I have it set up all set up for you guys. Um, and it's a way to bring the instrument that normally you would see up on the ceiling or you know yeah. far away or enclosed um, right to eye level. And it's something that in a lot of ways is really, really good for young children.
first area I would look at and spend time and the pedal needs more shaping. Um, and part of that is that like when you have four notes in a row there, it just, it's not as satisfying musically to go boo, 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 boo. You need to probably actually have, have a little pedaling play at. I liked what you did a moment ago when, when, you, when you did the two, three, bum, 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 bum. But even now, you want to think of it as being a two, which means that the first two beats are sort of like buddies, and the third and fourth beat are sort of like buddies. And so the more that the pedal can sort of lilt along in that two, ba, 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 it helps to feel that two as compared to one, 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 you know, that's So even in the beginning, ba, da, I, 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 you might go like, you know, right, left, left, right. says diversify your repertoire and that will include a variety of um, um, different kinds of composers we also have a guide um, for gender diversity so if you're looking for organ music by a trans composer or organ music by a woman composer you can find that in there as well and then finally I make guides for each division in the conservatory and so the keyboard studies division has a section for organ there's also a section for piano and a section for harpsichord. 
but there will be repertoire guides in there. And, and if we have a minute to go into the classroom, I can show you these guides online too. But that's what I would do. Now, here I'm looking photocopying. So if you need to copy a piece of music that's here, let me do that. Um, what we say is whatever people do with the Xerox machine, they're, they're responsible for that. Um, and generally, if it's for educational purposes, it's not a problem. Oh, that's okay. Yeah. You hear that? Yeah. So.
one, two, three, four. Yes, now, now, if you could encourage your thumb not to reach for the next thing, but just kind of shift your hand up and play the next group of four notes. Sorry, do that again. So I... Yeah, yeah. So try, try this. So playing four notes at a time. Yep, that's the feeling. That's the feeling, yep. I'm used to rotating my hand. I know, I know, way. I know. That's very, that's very pianistic. Yeah, yeah. So, so now, now try playing the scale with that same sense of four notes, four notes, four notes. Great. And you see how one time, the second time you missed the fourth finger? I, did you notice that? Yeah. I love that. I love it when that happens. Because when that happens, it means that you're using the fourth finger to play a weak note and it didn't quite go down. So that shows me that you're now experimenting with different weight on different on different notes. And that's a that's a that's a great sign. I mean it's not how you ultimately wanna <laughs> wanna end up playing it, but um, that's always that's always good. That's a, that's always a good sign. Uh, so one, two, three, four, one, can you start there again? Just the right hand? and then making a cadence in that key. So having those patterns become automatic is part of the trick of improvisation. So you're not thinking up new stuff every time. You know, you're, you're falling back on patterns that you know and pulling one pattern out of your bag of tricks and then another one and then another one. Yeah. <laughs>